Yo, what's up, guys? Woo! We are not doing that the whole video. <laughs> What's up guys, Damon here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and we are back to our top 10 cards in the main sets of the game. And today's set is The Shining Darkness. The Shining, what is, The Shining Darkness? What does that even mean? The Shining Darkness is actually a really solid set, and it's got some of my favorite cards in the game in it. So I'm actually, Davey's super excited. So I'm not gonna rag on these cards too much, because the personal bias is real. The same rules apply as always. We're gonna do our best to look at the cards just as the cards, and if there's ties or things like that, we'll look at outside support and future formats and all that other hooey in order to uh, at least get the order of the cards down. If you guys don't agree with the list or you have your own opinions, put those down in the comments below. And always remember, uh, you can always join the Discord because it's actually you guys that make these things. I'm just reporting the news. Don't shoot the messenger. I know it's been a while, so uh, make sure you like the Facebook page and uh, the Patreon and all that other stuff because that is where I post a lot of my personal news and things like that, so you guys can know when this stuff is coming out. With the changes to the algorithm and the, uh, the COPPA stuff, make sure that you're liking the video and commenting, please, guys. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. I'm not a kid's channel, but I am in a kid, at least semi-interested topic, so I'm in that perfect gray area for this thing to really bite me in the butt. And to that point, fuck, shit, boobs, tits, just in case. <laughs> But anyway, let's get started with The Shining Darkness. Number 10 is Nimble Sunfish. All right. Nimble Sunfish is a level two fish monster with the following effect. It's uncanny. I haven't heard a siren all day. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can send one fish monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then you can summon one Nimble Sunfish from your deck. Ooh, it's a battle tutor that replaces itself and dumps a card to the graveyard. That's really, really solid. Obviously, battle tutors are way out of date. When you combo this thing with Nimble Angler, the amount of advantage you can accrue is absolutely stupid. So it might be slow, but uh, a plus two maneuver, even if it's slow, is, you know, you still have to give it some props. That's a lot of advantage. And in the modern Link era, Nimble Angler, at least, is pretty solid. That's a lot of free bodies to do stuff with. So good on you, some fish. You might be based on a giant, useless, stupid fish that bobs around in the ocean until it dies, but you're good. <laughs> Which is ironically not very nimble, but you're a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Number nine is Batterman Fuel Cell. This level six Light Thunder monster has the following effect. If you control two or more Batterman monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Nice. Once per turn, you can tribute one other battery man except himself to select one card your opponent controls and bounce it to their hand. Nice. With 2100 attack and a self-special summoning ability, he's a nice little body as well as an extender. And uh, bouncing is a pretty solid source of field removal because a lot of things have like destruction protection, but most things don't have any, you know, bouncing protection, just like, you know, targeting and stuff like that. But in general, that's a really solid little, a little removal. And it certainly plays into the battery and strategy because uh, they're an OTK style deck. They just keep putting bodies on board, bounce all your stuff with this guy, and then <laughs> obviously tributing one of your dudes does fly in the face of your, your OTK a little bit, but they can put enough damage on board where it, it tends not to matter. I love battery, man. I think they're a cool OTK strategy. Like I said, I, I, this set has got just tons of cards I like. Number eight is Double X Saber Bogart Knight. Ah, oh, see, now here's a, an archetype. I have no idea how it works. It's, they, they synchro summon. This level four Earth Beast Warrior monster with 1900 attack, wow, has the following effect. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level four or lower X Saber monster from your hand. This guy cannot be used for the material for a synchro summon, except for an X Saber synchro. Uh, it's a big body. It's searchable by tanky. Uh, it summons another dude, so you can make XC, Link, or synchro plays. I don't need to know how the deck works to know that this is a good card <laughs> and probably required at three for the deck. Correct me if I'm wrong. I never would have thought I'd ever put a Gen X card on a top list of anything except top worst synchro decks, the shade. But Gen X Undyne, Undyne? Is actually, a, it's, it's really good. She's a level three water aqua monster with the following effect. And yes, I think it's a chick. She's got a... Gen X boobies. 
And this card is normal summon, you can send one water monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then add one Gen X controller from your deck to your hand. It's a plus one, that's cool. And it mills a choice water monster out of your deck. It does that thing that Nimble Sunfish was doing with Angler, but except on summon and not a crappy battle thing. That's pretty good. Tons of water decks like Mermail and such were running this card because hey, it sets up your graveyard. And it gives you a free monster in the hand. That's really cool. Sadly, uh, Gen X controller is like a, a level three vanilla tuner monster, dark. So most water decks were br begrudgingly running the tuner, but uh, it's a garnet. But you could run like copies of Allure of Darkness, I guess, for your one dark target. <laughs> it is searchable after all. But it is a small price to pay for this level of basically free graveyard setup. And until we got better options later, uh, this was the go-to. Oh man, this is number one. Why is this at six? Tetsuro Arat Newman. <laughs> yes! Tiny Turtle, is, he might be the mascot of the channel and one of my favorite cards in the entire game catalog. Uh, he's not the best. He's very format dependent and uh, uh, we still don't have a really solid way of just getting him on the board, especially without uh, Summon Sork. Hmm. But once you do, Paleo Frogs um, Tier 1 confirmed. Tetsuo Rot Nguyen's a level 1 water aqua monster with the following effect. Either player can special summon monsters with 1800 or more attack power. Uh, with 1800 defense, uh, that means that any of your opponent's normal or special summonable monsters, uh, we're gonna have a hard time getting over this because any of their special summons aren't strong enough to kill it in defense mode to get it off the board nor to special summon bigger dudes. And uh, a lot of decks that would, this that would actually be really, really good against don't have a ton of main deck monsters with over 1800 attack. A lot of decks don't because a lot of modern decks, especially combo decks, the, the, the your main monster monsters are just a bunch of dudes to get other dudes to then go into your extra deck and none of them are particularly stunning or fantastic with their, uh, their, their, uh, their stats. So in the right format, this thing is an absolute just Shut out. Crowning achievement with this card was during Necroz format. I normal summoned it and equipped it with Moon Mirror Shield. My opponent was playing Necroz and he had no out to it. <laughs> he couldn't even play. <laughs> had, we had to go to game two. It was, it was really funny. The top five. Oh yeah. Hey, DZ just made a video about this. At least I think he did. It could have been an old video that came up in my feed. I, I don't. I just clicked it because it was the next one in the in the thing. But uh, Into the Void. If you have three or more cards in your hand, draw one card. And if you do during the end phase, you discard your whole hand. Boneless Demise before Demise was a card, but uh, it is a solid replacement to Upstart Goblin in decks that can run it. It basically just lets you cycle a card out of your deck. Uh, it's a terrible top deck, obviously, because you need to have an, there's an activation condition for it, having three or more cards in your hand. Uh, I guess that was a way to balance it so that you're less able to get those cards then out of your hand so that during the end phase you might actually have to discard something unlike you know upstart goblin which is just a free cycle however when you're playing something like i don't know a really spell heavy deck or a really trap heavy deck or something like cleave or there's whatever where they can just get their stuff on board and have no hand then you just so it doesn't really matter it's a it's a solid little draw card it, it works in the decks it works in Number four is Herald of Perfection. Herald of Perfection is a level six light fairy ritual monster with the following effect. During your player's turn, when your opponent activates a trap card, spell card, or a monster effect, you can discard one fairy from your hand to negate and destroy that card. Whoa, that's good. Herald of Perfection is fantastic. With 2800 defense, it put him in defense mode. He's uh, He just negates everything your opponent's trying to do unless they have some sort of graveyard effect from a spell or trap that they can like, I don't know, like a, like a breakthrough skill type deal because he can't negate that kind of thing. He's actually really hard to get rid of. You gotta like kaiju it or whatever. Even in a modern format, there's just some decks that do not have good main deck options in order to deal with this thing. And we do just kind of get random fairy support here and there. I think that Eva or whatever it was called, this little guy, it looks like an alien. Pretty solid support for this, helps you refresh your hand, stuff like that. The card's still really good. It, one of those old school style ritual cards that they have to be really careful with. It's like the reason why all of our generic ritual support needs to like be very, very specific in how it works because cards like this are actually really powerful. And you know, that's like why the incantations aren't fairies. Could you imagine? Oof. I love this card. I played this deck. It's a lot of fun. It's a big pain in the butt. Go Herald. <laughs> Number three is Spore. What a pun! It looks a little bit like a what a pun. 
This is a level 1 plant tuner monster with the following effect. And this card's in your graveyard can banish one other plant monster from your graveyard to special summon this card, then increase its level by the level of the guy banished. Either player can only use this effect once per duel. It's a level 1 tuner that summons itself from the graveyard and at least in some fashion it has an at will level modulation. Uh, that is absolutely fantastic. He's like glow up bulbs slightly less broken little brother. I'm pretty positive this card spent some time on the Forbidden Limited list uh, just because, again, it's good. It's a body. It's got good graveyard recursion. It's a tuner. It just means you can do a lot with it. You can use it for literally almost all of our special summoning conditions. Except, like, uh, well, no, I guess there's generic fusions. I don't know what one for a plant, though. You could make one dragon with it. But yeah, it, it's fantastic. And in the modern day, with links and things like that, and uh, supposedly nibble, 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 nimble fiber, <laughs> needle fiber, these little tuner guys just get better and better. So, uh, yeah, th this card's fantastic. And it's really cute. Oh, you guys know me so well. Number two is Ronin Toten. Man, I love this card. This thing is broke. Personal bias aside, um, this card definitely should be high in the list just because a monster you can summon from your graveyard as is, is many times as you can pay the cost. Uh, that's fantastic. Rotontonin's a level 2 aqua monster with the following effect. Cannot be used as synchro material. I honestly forget that it has that stipulation because it, <laughs> it never comes up. This card's name becomes Death Frog while it's on the field. <laughs> I also always forget that it does that, because it never comes up. If this card's in the graveyard, you can banish one frog monster from your graveyard to special summon this card from your graveyard. It's really, really solid material for Lynx and Xyz, especially because, you know, frogs have their own their own powerful Xe monster in Totally Awesome. That This thing is basically just, again, a free body. Ribbit. I love me some frogs. And before we get to number one, we do have a few honorable mentions. There are tons of really good cards in this set. It was actually really kind of difficult for me to, to solidify the, the top 10 because I feel like I was leaving out a lot of gems. Um, so for some honorable mentions, we have things like uh, uh, Palm, Palmanero, Palm, oof. The, the little lizard tuner guy. It's kind of an obscure X Saber tuner. However, did see some play during Pepe format because you could, you could search it with Feral Imp and and it, it was just like something that lets you make like Naturia Beast and stuff like that. So it saw some competitive success. It's a decent little tuner, more for what it is, less than what it does, but that would be a shame to ignore that it, that it actually saw some play. And uh, Infernity Barrier, that's another one, because uh, these in archetype counter traps things, uh, they are now mostly referred to as Infernity Barriers for the deck, just like MST is a general term now for like um, spell trap negation. This kind of in-theme counter trap that negates like all the things, people call those Infernity Barriers because of this card. It, it made that idea famous. So yeah, sure. How about, a, how about a dishonorable mention? Um, Electromagnetic Shield. Electromagnetic Shield is a continuous spell with the following effect. Level 3 or lower face-up defense position thunder monsters that you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Destroy this card if you have a attack position monster. I get that it's generic thunder support, but it depicts a battery man. Battery men are an OTK strategy. They don't do this. <laughs> they don't put guys in defense mode. I don't know, this card's terrible and stupid. Just play Mirror Force. That way you don't telegraph to your opponent that you have battle protection and that they must get rid of it. No, you lose the element of surprise if it's not face down. It's stupid. It doesn't even... There's no deck this works in. And even if it did have a home, it, it's not good protection. It's just cruddy battle protection for your defense position monsters. It's just a stupid card that would be in your deck solely to mitigate a problem scenario that you should never even be in to begin with. It, it's stupid. And uh, before we get to number one, uh, we also have uh, our sponsors for the video. First one is TCG Player. If you guys want any of these awesome broken cards, especially them Tetsuo Ron Newman's buyout incoming, you can use my link in the doobly-doo to get all these cards. I'll actually have Ryan tailor the link to just be this set. Neat. It helps me, helps the channel. Also, uh, meta mats. So if you guys want to get all the cool cards, you could also get all the cool mats and get yourself some sweet custom swag for your new brand spanking deck. Promo code, as always, to save 10%. Woot. Ah, number one, Infernity Launcher. 
uh, Inferno Launcher is currently on the limited list. Uh, it makes it at one, which is also why it's number one, because that's how my lists work. The, the limited cards and forbidden cards get bonked up to the top, because if they're on the ban list, they must be better than all the cards that aren't on the ban list, right? Because they wouldn't be banned otherwise, or limited, or whatever. And that logic normally holds true, except for like just a really like strange cards that just have weird problematic effects that aren't actually even good. They just cause weird loops or things like that. In general, in general, the link with duo is fantastic. It's better than most cards in the game. That's why it's banned. And Inferno Launcher is, is certainly in the latter category. It, it's certainly fantastic. I assume, because I don't know how the deck works. <laughs> However, I do know that uh, it doesn't like having a hand, and I also know that it, it spam summons like infinite loops, and I'm pretty sure you need this card to do that, I think. What does this do? It's a continuous spell. Once per turn, you can send one Inferno monster from your hand to the graveyard. Okay, so it accomplishes the no hand thing that the deck likes to do. You can send this card to the graveyard from the field to special summon two Inferno monsters from your graveyard. You can't have any cards in your hand in order to do this effect. That's a plus one maneuver. That's fantastic. Okay, yes, I get it. And presumably, I, I think you can loop this card too? Don't quote me on that. Regardless, it, that's just fantastic field advantage, and it, it's clearly an engine card for the deck. So, okay, fine, yeah, number one, solid. Anyway guys, that was the Shining Darkness. Like I said, this set's actually really good. Personal biased aside, I think next video is gonna be the November edition of News Geo. It might be a shorter one given the holiday and everyone's awful schedules, but I will definitely try to get that. I will be turning 30 the 22nd. I'll be old boy. So uh, maybe we'll do something stupid for that. God, I'm almost dead. <laughs> guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? Uh, if, I, if I live, I will see you guys next time. <laughs>